joining me for my first vlog video I'm hoping to do one of these a week just taking you guys about with me on this day doing little reading updates I don't have a super packed week this week it's Monday today and I'm not working until the weekend so I've got a couple of life admin bits I want to get done some old habits I've kind of fallen off the wagon with that I want to, to restart for the new year so yeah, today I am going to start my new daily planner. It's a new routine that I want to get into just to try and help me keep on course with my goals and keep on top of everything that I want to do with my bookstagram and with this channel. So yeah, I'm going to get started with that and maybe go for a run later. Just a really chill day. I'll do some reading updates as well with the books that I've got on the go at the moment. And yeah, thanks so much for joining me. So this is the little planner that I chose. It's from Papier and it's part of their collab with Bodil Jane, who is a illustrator I've been following on Instagram for quite a while. And I just love her stuff. This is all little fruit stickers. I just thought it was such a nice design. It's a weekly planner, if I can turn the page. A weekly planner and then it breaks down day by day as well. stick with it and hopefully it'll be kind of like a motivator to me to see my goals in smaller chunks. I think it's easier to work towards things that way when you break them down into just like the week to week, month to month, day to day. It becomes more manageable like that and I don't know sometimes with Covid it's been kind of hard to think positively about the future so I think just to have these small things to work towards a little bit at a time, hopefully, will make me feel a little bit more positive about things going forward because I think it's quite easy to be fatalistic and miserable about stuff like that at the moment. So, yeah, hopefully this will be a good habit tracker and a good motivator for me. Another just chill day plan to be honest. Did yoga and a workout this morning. Gonna read for a bit and then have lunch. Um, I've got a couple of reviews I want to get written today and I also really want to film a top 10 reads video for like my favourite books from last year. It was actually really hard to narrow down like my 10 favourites but I think I've got a pretty good selection. I just read so much good stuff last year. I think last year was a, a super strong reading year for me, even if it was a bit of a crisis in other respects. And I think I'm going to make pita bread pizzas for lunch, which is definitely one of my favourite things to make. I actually make this all the time. Some parts during lockdown I was having this every day, but it's just so simple and so quick. Um, and I'm also such an advocate for a hot lunch. Like, why have a sandwich when you could have a soup? 
when you could have a pasta, when you could have leftovers, you know? It, give, give me some heat. Give me some heat. It's January. and I'm just gonna sit and read for a bit. I thought I would just share the books I've got on the go at the moment. I'm reading one fiction, one non-fiction, which is pretty typical for me. I'm a mood reader mainly, um, but I think I like the balance of fiction and non-fiction because I find if I read two fiction books at once, I get a bit muddled with the storylines, whereas the distinction between fiction and non is a little bit easier for me to to read simultaneously. So for my non-fiction I'm reading Speak Okinawa by Elizabeth Miki Bruna which is a memoir and it is really really good. It's about her parents relationship and about her identity. Her dad was an American soldier and her mum is an Okinawan war bride so they met when her dad was stationed in Okinawa and her mum was working as a waitress in a nightclub. Um, and then they come back to the States and that's where Elizabeth is raised. So in the book she's kind of looking at the power imbalance between her parents, about the life of her mom who doesn't speak very much English but is living in an English speaking country, surrounded by English speaking people and how isolating that must have been. It's a very honest book, she's talking about the way that she regarded her mom so poorly when she was younger because she felt embarrassed to be Japanese and embarrassed of her mom's foreignness and what that must have felt like for her mom. She's kind of reckoning with that as an adult and trying to repair the, the relationship with her mom. It's very well written and also has a lot about the history of Okinawa as an occupied territory and Okinawan culture and, and how the, the war has really been a stain on kind of the consciousness of the Okinawan people. She just writes with such a beautiful voice, it's so easy to follow what she's saying and she has a lot of really beautiful moments where she's kind of meditating on the way that her parents' relationship informed her own understanding of herself growing up and, you know, her identity as a mixed race woman, as someone who aspired to be white passing and, and what that meant for her mum. So I am about halfway through, I think my book marks, yeah, I'm about halfway through this one. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing where it goes and I'm learning a lot about Okinawan history as well from this. And my fiction book at the moment is a bit of a tome. Um, oh God, I almost hit myself in the face. It is The Books of Jacob by Olga Tokarczuk, who I think is my favourite author. I think she is. I absolutely adored Flights and Drive Your Plough Over the Bones of the Dead. She's a Polish author, she writes in Polish. And this is translated by Jennifer Croft, and honestly, what a feat of translation. This is almost a thousand pages long. Um, it's kind of widely regarded as her magnum opus, and it's only just been brought into English translation by Fitzcarraldo. And how far through am I? It's hard to keep track of this one because for some reason they've numbered the pages backwards. So I've got 710 pages to go. So me and this one are in a long-term committed relationship for now. Um, the book is based on a real person. It's like an 18th century Jewish mystic called Jacob Frank, who is traveling across Europe, kind of like right on the cusp of the European Enlightenment period. Um, it's very meditative and ponderous in the way that Tokarczuk's work often is, looking a lot like binaries and dichotomies. And I really like that in her work. So far, we have just met Jacob, and he seems like kind of an odd guy. And apparently he converts to a few different religions. I think some people are skeptical of whether he's the messiah. So he seems like a very interesting character and this is kind of like a biography of him but also is kind of framed through the lens of the people around him. And there's this elderly character called Yente who the book keeps coming back to and we see. She's kind of on, on the cusp of death and we see her mind kind of wandering and travelling to different places as she kind of enters different people's dreams. So that mystical element I'm really liking. Um, yeah, I'm gonna be... I'm gonna be stuck with this one for a while. But I'm enjoying it. It's not something I would typically read. 
looking at the blurb, I never would have picked this up unless I saw it was Tokuchuk and because I saw it was her, I, you know, I had to read it. So I'm going to feel a real sense of achievement when I finish this, probably in about, you know, 2026. But yeah, that's what I'm reading for just now, so I'll obviously keep you guys updated with how I go. But yeah, I've started the year off strong, I'm really liking these. I ended up not really filming anything yesterday at all because I was editing my top 10 reads video which hopefully will be up already. Um, it took a lot longer than I thought. I hadn't used iMovie in a really long time. I hadn't used iMovie since like media in high school so it was definitely a throwback to that period but I think it's pretty much done. I do need to go in and caption it and also make a thumbnail as well. And I'm desperate to get out of the flat today. So I think even if I don't get that finished, I still wanna go out for a wee coffee or something just to get some fresh air because for the past few days, the only time I've been out is to go for a run or to go to the shop. So yeah, I'm gonna have lunch first because it's almost 12 and yeah. Hopefully it won't take me too long to caption. I'm not sure what the YouTube auto captioning is like. I'm guessing probably not great, but hopefully it won't take hours. <laughs> okay. I think I'm done editing my top 10 reads and I was using Canva to make like the thumbnail it is so good if graphic design wasn't my passion before it is now i thought that was going to take ages that was so easy just going to get a wee bit of a workout in by carrying this to the coffee shop and um, i do love weightlifting so gonna go out for a run and just got this through the post which I think is book mail I think I know what it is but I'm gonna wait until I'm back to open it just have something to look forward to glad I went for a run I feel a lot better I really couldn't be bothered going out but I feel better for having got some fresh air and ran past a little free library there are quite a few of them in Edinburgh um, and I found this which is Zadie Smith's short story collection which is really cool. I need to read more of her work, I absolutely loved, is it Northwest? Um, so yeah, looking forward to this. It, the book box was like really near the start of our run so I was carrying this for like most of it. So just like love the vibe of me sprinting, well not sprinting do my best to sprint um, with a book in hand like a true bookstagrammer um, and yeah I'm gonna open up this package now 
think I know what this is. Okay, it is unboxing. I feel like a true um a true YouTuber now. I'm gonna have to go like this, like Ooh, this is exciting. So it's a box from Books That Matter, which is a book subscription service. Um, they got in touch with me the other day to send me this, so this was sent to me for free, um, which is really kind of them. So Books That Matter is a book subscription service. They send out boxes once a month and each box has a book by a female author and some little bits from independent female creative brands, which is really cool, so I'm excited to open this up. And I think it's a book I've been wanting to read as well, which is really cool. Oh, actually, I should I should show it, shouldn't I, in the box? I ripped it already, but I'll show you anyway. I'm never very good at doing things like this one-handed. Oh, yay! It is the book I thought it was. So, to start off with the book, is. You Exist Too Much by Zena Arafat, which is about a Palestinian-American woman, I believe. Yeah, this sounds so good. Nice. Okay, I've seen a lot of good reviews of this one. And then I also have... Oh, what's this? Queer Body Power, Finding Your Body Positivity by Essie Dennis. Is this a little... like Essie? Oh, an excerpt from Essie Dennis's book. That's cool. We'll need to check that out as well. And then, oh, what's this? Oh, CBD Fizz Flow. <gasps> That's nice. Oh my gosh, I haven't tried any CBD stuff. That's so cool. <gasps> Look at that. What's, what is the company? Miss Patisserie from Cardiff. Nice. There's not a bath in the flat, but I have got a bath at home and I love taking baths. So that's cool, can't wait to try that. And then there is a wee card. Actually, maybe I should open that. Okay, nice. So in here is a little decal that you can put on glass or a mirror. It's a Sylvia Plath quote. And this is from a company called Rock On Ruby. Oh, then there's loads of prints. How cool is that? Let me lay these out. Sweet. So in there, there were some nice prints and a wee a leaflet about the contents of the box. That's so cool. Thank you so much to the team at Books That Matter for sending this over. This is so cool. Look how nice these prints are. And it means I can finally... Oh, yes. I'm loving the fantasy right now. Like, it's probably not even focusing. I know lighting's terrible, but I feel like a uh, beauty guru. That smells really nice as well. Oh yay, this was so fun to open. Hey, it is Friday, almost four o'clock, and I finally finished editing the captions for my top 10 reads video, and I'm gonna post it tonight, which is really exciting, because that will be my first video to go up. And I've not done much today. My SD card ran out of space, so I went to Tesco to try and find a new one, which is how I'm filming this. And I did go past a really good book charity shop on the way. I go past it all the time, but rarely when it's open for some reason. And they always have such good donations in the window. They have such a good range of stock. Loads of like hardback fiction, loads of really new stuff. And like also a surprising amount of proofs as well. Um, so yeah, you can get hold of really good stuff there. pick up two books one of which had been in the window when I ran past a couple of times recently and I had a mental note that it was there so I went back to pick it up it is Against the Loveless World by Susan Abulhawa which is about a Palestinian refugee who is locked up in an Israeli prison and I've heard a lot of really good things about this one I see a lot of love for it on bookstagram and um, 
so looking forward to getting started with this one and then i also picked up of women and salt by gabrielle garcia which is an intergenerational plot which i love i believe it's set in cuba or at least partially so it goes from 1866 cuba to mexico and the contemporary united states following five generations of women linked by blood and circumstance by a single book passed down through a family with an affirmation scrawled in its margins we are forced we are more than we think we are so such a stunning cover on this one and i've seen quite a few people love this one too so those are two i'm definitely looking forward to and then i thought i would just share a quick reading update as well i'm still i still have the same two books on the go so speak okinawa i'm still really liking this one and i always think it's so brave when people write books about their parents or when people have the the ability to reflect on their own relationship with their parents i just think that's really brave because you're really you know putting a lot at stake there to kind of unpick some of those relationships so yeah i think this is like such a brave piece of work and she's really not afraid to criticize herself either and to look back on past mistakes she's made and the ways that she's grown especially in relation to how she relates to the the japanese side of herself and overcoming the shame that she felt as a child which kind of drove her to have this poor relationship with her mom so yeah i think this is a really definitely feels like an ode to her mom she does and um, have a lot of positive things to say about her dad as well but ultimately this seems to be kind of a reckoning with the japanese side of her which is the side from her mom and then i'm still trolling on with Pogachuk's The Books of Jacob. I actually reached a new book in it, so it's split into loads of different sections actually. So, so far I've read The Book of Fog, The Book of Sand, and then I've just got to book three, The Book of the Road. So, yeah, I'm really getting into the swing of this one now. I've started to understand a bit more who the characters are. There are a lot of characters in this and they're all kind of scattered across um, Poland and Turkey so it did take me a while to kind of figure out who's who but I'm definitely more in the swing of it now and it's become more clear who the actually important characters are. So I'm going to carry on with this one for just now I think. I really don't know how long this is going to take me to read because it's just so huge. I have 654 pages to go. Also kind of cool it has these little like illustrations and little maps and things in it which I think that I mean Fitzgerald has like super small type so I'm proper squinting to read this but it's really cool how they like inlaid these images and little diagrams and stuff and there's my cute little bookmark Um, I'll need to maybe the girl who makes these she's based in Glasgow she makes such nice stuff I have a couple of her prints too I will pop her name up on the screen Um to give her credit for it because this is like a Pandora's box bookmark. I just think it's such a gorgeous design. vlog here i'm just working um tomorrow and the day after so now it feels like a good time to kind of wrap things up a little bit i hope you've enjoyed watching my week i know it's been a super quiet one um i haven't left the flat too much to be honest but i've still had quite a nice week um i think using my planner has helped me to kind of keep on top of some of the tasks i wanted done my main goal was to get my first youtube video up and I did it, I just posted it um, a wee while ago. I'm just going to chill a wee bit, I've got the flat to myself tonight, going to read. I'm going to catch up on Canada's Drag Race because I haven't watched it in a few weeks. Yeah, it's been fun um, taking the camera about with me. Definitely um, funny getting used to bringing it out at times that normally like seem so mundane. But hopefully you guys have enjoyed watching. 
and yeah i'll see you next week thanks so much for hanging out with me bye <laughs>